Do you, how do you see the evolution of Mambo? Well, I mean, what, now today you, you, you travel again, because you were always in New York, but now you travel again. How do you see the evolution of Mambo around the world? Um, Are you satisfied? It seems that you, don't, you dislike few things. Let, let's put it to you this way. I spent my entire youth and my life trying to save the dance from becoming extinct forever, because it was dying. So I, Tito Puente and I were working like real hard to save the, it was like a dying animal, like the eagle. Tito says, Eddie, we got to save the dance because now the people are leaving it. They're forgetting it. We're going to lose it. So Tito helped me everywhere we used to go. He would tell people, look, Eddie and Maria, the last Mambo team in the world, you got to send your children to their school. They got to, you got to keep this alive. So fine, after I saw what was happening, that people started learning from the 90s up, everybody around the world, coming back to learning mambo salsa, I was happy. But now they're changing the look and the concept of what the, dan is, the dancer has been all these years, all the tradition is being lost, so now I don't recognize the dance, the traditional form of the dance hardly so anymore. African, African, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm talking about back in the den, uh, in those days, nobody came dressed like a skeleton mm. to do a mambo show. But it's also interesting to no, 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 listen, let me finish. Yeah. So I say, look, I am the one that started that, Fred. I was the first one who brought tricks into the mambo. I brought theater. I have numbers that I could show you on video, like Broadway productions, where guys are doing break dancing on their heads, and I got um, Charleston, and I got jazz. I brought all that idea in there. Ask the guys from Salsa Brava. They saw me in 99 in Puerto Rico, and they were like, I brought 28 dancers, and we did a number by Machito called Azulito, where I had guys with umbrellas doing moonwalk, and I had guys spinning on their head. I had hustle dancers. So oh. I, I was the one that had the idea of making the fusion, but that was part of my repertoire. Oh. I had yes. traditional, I had contemporary, and I was a man who was always thinking, I'm like Tito Puente. Tito Puente wrote every type of music. Mm -hmm. Not just typical mambo. He wrote classical. Oh, jazz. Yeah, jazz. Yeah, jazz. He went everywhere. You know? mm -hmm. So I was thinking, I think the same way. Open mind, but always maintaining contact with the tradition, the root. Yes. So now I say, now that I see what's going on, I tell people, now I have to dust, take the dust off my shoes because I've been retired for years. I said, now i got to take my costumes back, back out the closet, put it on, because now... I think I have to save the mambo again from the future. Yes. Follow so your back. That's exactly right. Because I, came, I came back and people said, Eddie, hey, look what's going on. You got to do something. I said, well, I'm only one person. But I remember as one person, and they said it only takes one man with vision to make a change. Do you think that you have a mission? <laughs> I, I've always had it. I've, I've, because I it's your life. So. Well, no, no. Uh, seriously, when I was 16 years old, I told my mother, before I, I never graduated from high school. Why? Because Everybody's in school studying math and, and history, and I'm with my little tape recorder listening to Tito Puente making up steps. And they call my mother and say, your kid needs a psychiatrist. What's wrong? He's crazy. Everybody wants to study and graduate. He wants to dance mambo. So they said, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. I was born to dance, and I'm going to dance with Tito Puente. And, and she said, but there's no market. I'm going to make a market. I'm going to help make a market. I had a mission. I had already something that I felt driven yeah. in my life to do. And even my mother said, Mio, you tuta loco. She goes, there's no work back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. None of this, no congreso, no classes, nothing. I said, Mom, relax. I says, I'm going to help make that happen. When you open up this yellow pages, you never saw mambo lessons that, that were contemporary street. You saw Fred Astaire, Arthur Murray. And when I used to go see these people dance, mm -hmm. yes. Arthur Murray. <laughs> but it's there. I said, I don't want to look like that, Fred. I'm going to go to the nightclub. <laughs> look like a, a walking yeah. stick. I yeah. said, no, man, this is Mambo, man. Why? Yeah. And I didn't know anything about timing. So since I couldn't find a teacher, I, I used to tell Tito, Tito, there's no way to go study. He says, forget the teacher. You invent the way. He says, you have a gift. You invent, you make your mm. own tech. Mm. So Tito used to encourage me. Mm. Huh? Uh, okay. Now, after I started working and started, you know, establishing myself in the world as a, as a dancer and as a choreographer with Tito Puente, even my mother, and I have this on video, they did a, a, an interview and they had <coughs> me do a dance with my wife to end the show, 
and they said, tell us about your dream, because I told them I had a dream when I was very young, and I saw myself in a big, big place like Madison Square Garden performing with Tito Puente, and in the dream, I'm, I'm seeing this beautiful presentation with the orchestra, and I'm dancing there, and I'm hearing this voice saying, you will one day establish your work, and around the world, people will know who you are. Mm -hmm. And this was like something I woke up, I said, Mom, I believe I know what I'm going to be doing with my life. She goes, what? I said, I'm going to work with Tito, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take my... She goes, my God, I think you're crazy. I says, no. She says, why don't you go study mechanic like your father, your uncle, everybody in your family is a mechanic. I said, no, you know what, Mom? I'm not going to earn my living with my hands. She goes, what are you going to do? You're going to earn a living with your feet? I said, yes, I am. So after many years that she saw what started to happen, she goes, oh, my God. She goes, I never knew. She goes, I'm your mother. I didn't know that you were born in this world with this mission for dancing now what does my mother what role does she play Fred my mother is my number one fan oh, yes. she prepares all my costumes when I'm going to travel she takes care of my diet she's, now? she's, now? she's, she's alive now she's 80 years old oh yes yeah she's the one that takes care of me but everybody says your wife I said no no, no my, <laughs> wife, my, my wife takes care of other needs oh, yes, okay. I said my mother comes she cooks for me uh -huh. you know, she's like my manager Right? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Kay. And now she says, my son, she says, now I understand why you were born. It's no coincidence that you and Tito are born in the same hospital, raised in the same neighborhood, and 20-something years later you find you, your, your destinies cross and you work together for 21 years. I worked with Tito Point. Mm -hmm. All right? Is it like your father for you? Like a father, yes, exactly. And I used to tell Tito, I said, he says, Eddie, because I used to show him the choreography. I study his music. I said, look, Tito, look at this new choreography I put together with your music. He said, wow, he said, that's interesting. He says, how, how do you do that? I said, well, the same way you write music and you, you have ideas for arrangements. Uh -huh. I says, but Tito, you know what? I know who I am. I was born to choreograph your music. Oh, yeah. Really? I said, yeah. Uh -huh. I said, I was sent here. I said, somebody had to see this beautiful music in movement. Uh -huh. And Tito loved the dance, right? Tito loved the dance. He was a good dancer. Yeah. So he would support it because he would love tap dancing and all. He was like, wow. So I would choreograph these pieces. And then after 10 years, he started to tell me, you know what? You're right. You're the ambassador for the, for the dance, and I'm the ambassador for the music. When we went to meet President Bush, the father, back yes. in 90, I think it was 90-something, 90 97, he went up to the president when we went to take a picture, and he tells the president, Mr. President, my name is Tito Puente, and I am the goodwill ambassador for Latin music around the world. And President Bush looked at him, he says, Mr. Puente, I need no int introduction to you. He says, I'm a big fan of yours. Mm -hmm. He goes, yeah? <laughs> he says, well, guess what? He says, after the show, I'm going to give you an autograph. He told me. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he says, if you play your cards right after the show, because, see, that's what I loved about Tito. Oh, yeah. Tito didn't care if you were the president, the queen of England. He would treat you just like he treated anybody else. Mm -hmm. With respect, yeah. but he had a sense of humor. No? That's what I loved about him. He wasn't like, no, no. Yes. Tito, Tito would fly, fly first class everywhere around the world, but when, when I would fly with Tito, he'd be in economy hanging out with us, telling jokes. I said, Tito, but you belong in first class. He said, it's boring up there, man. Everybody reading magazines. and He said, back here I could tell jokes, and he's like, I could drink a little. And that's Tito Puente. Mm -hmm. Tito Puente was never snooty. Mm -hmm. A, lo a lot of people have learned from you a lot of things. What do you think about people who learn from you, who are copying you some kind of, and not telling that you are their uh, original teacher? I mean, imitation. Well, what do you think of imitation? What some no, what he's saying is actually a different point. He's saying a lot of people, mm. for example, if I start naming all the people who are now the stars, which yes. I don't care to, yes. because I, I'm not really bothered by it. Again, my, my joy and my satisfaction, my reward is to know that, look, when I come here now, I have my first time in Zurich, I come and go like, wow, here I come from Spanish Harlem. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought with this dream and this vision I had as a child that this was my mission in life to do this? And I always believed it would become popular, but my God, now in Alaska, Fred, they're calling me up. Can you come to Alaska, Eddie, and teach mambo? <laughs> I said, damn, the Eskimo, the Eskimos are dancing salsa. I said, we're, we're becoming as popular as McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, salsa. McDonald's, mm -hmm. salsa. You know what I mean? 
is all around the world. Mm. I would have never thought that. So that is a reward enough. Whether people want to give me recognition and you know give credit to where credit is due, it would be nice. It's nice if you if you uh, invented the wheel and somebody says, "Hey, Fred invented the wheel," right? But I'd like to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have a royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, if mm -hmm. there's a lot of people like Sion, mm -hmm. Silas, mm -hmm. yes. everywhere he stands, he says, I am a yes. product yes. And, a, and a student of Eddie Torres. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So maybe out of ten, maybe six, seven people, so that's fine. I have no problem with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, before I turn the page. Can you? Can you? Okay, we go over the questions. Mm -hmm.